Hello class, welcome to this lesson. We're going to be doing uh, another Excel lab practice. In this Excel lab, we're going to be looking at factorials, permutations, and combinations. We're going to be doing some application problems involving these and introduce the functions in Excel. So first off, we want to, let's say we wanted to compute five factorial in the first problem. Now remember, five fact, this uh, factorial means that you're multiplying by one less than that number and then you continue until you get to the number one. So five times four times three times two in this case. So how do we go about using this on Excel? So it's actually a very easy function. So if we wanted to do uh, five factorial where we're gonna say equals, remember that you need an equal sign for a formula and we're gonna go ahead and type in fact parentheses and then you're going to do the number. So fact 5. And lo and behold, that gives you 120. Remember that 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if you went ahead and did that, you get the same result. Pretty straightforward. So now we have 5 factorial is equal to 120. Now what if we have multiple factorials in, in the same problem? 8 factorial, 10 factorial, and 5 factorial. Well in that case, we're going to, so we have 8 factorial, 10 factorial, and 5 factorial. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off to the side. I'm just writing it down so I won't forget the problem. So we have equals. Now we want to do parentheses. We want fact 8 times fact 10, close the parentheses for the numerator, divided by, introduce uh, a parentheses for the denominator, fact 5, and then close the denominator parentheses. I did the parentheses in there just to be on the safe side, especially if you have multiple things in the expression, you generally want to have those parentheses. You may not actually need the parentheses for the fact 5 in the denominator because it's only one number. So we may not even need it there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, enter. And we got a huge number here uh, for this expression. All right. So now let's look at the uh, next problem. So part C, we're looking at a permutation. A permutation is an arrangement in which order matters. So you got 30 things, 30 objects, and you try to figure out how many different ways do I have of choosing five of those objects or, or arranging uh, five of them so that I have five and the order matters. So we want to calculate a permutation. Well, in this case, you're going to use the permute function. So equals permute parentheses. Now the first number is the total number in the group. And the next number is the number that you choose. In this case, we're choosing five from the group of 30. And there's my number. Again, pretty straightforward. Now if we want to do a combination, recall that a combination is an arrangement in, when you, in which you select individuals without regard to order, right? So you have 50. Um, individuals and you want to choose 10 at a time uh, without regard to order. So order does not matter. So if you want to do a combination, it's equals combine, combin, and then you're going to choose the number 50 and then we want to choose 10. We enter and we get our answer there. Right. If we wanted to um, multiply a bunch of different permutations or combinations or a combo of both, so let's. So in this case, we want to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, let's see here. I don't know if it'll work. Yeah, I wanted to paste that there just so that I have it for my reference. Um, so I just copied and pasted that. So now I'm going to go equals. So we want to do the permutation of 10 objects taken three at a time. So I'm going to do a parentheses. 
then I'm going to type in permute parentheses 10 comma 3 times permute parentheses 15 comma 4 close the parentheses divided by and again I'm going to do another parentheses here just to be on the safe side but it may not be necessary to do the parentheses for this denominator because it's only one thing permute 35 comma 7 close the parentheses there all right go ahead and type that in and we get a decimal 0 0.000695 all right so that's our answer for that problem okay so now if we wanted to do let's do a uh, application for the rest of them so now that we know how to calculate uh, the permutations combinations and factorials on Excel we should be able to apply these to um, a given scenario. So, you decide to pull five tickets from a raffle from a bag of 50 tickets. How many different ways are there to do this if each person receives the same price? So, you're pulling five tickets from 50. Each person receives the same prize, which means it doesn't matter which five tickets you, um, the order of the five tickets that you select. As long as you select those five tickets, each of those people will receive the same prize, so it doesn't matter uh, the order of the tickets. So in this case, order does not matter, which means we are looking at a combination. So we know that we're dealing with some kind of combination. We are choosing, we have 50 and we are choosing 5. That's all there is to it. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate that number. 50 choose 5. We're going to calculate it on Excel, of course. So we have equals combine combin fifty choose five. So we have two hundred eleven. Um, let's see here. We have two million one hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred sixty. And I'll just type that in for my. So that's my answer right there. Okay, so that's part A. So that's how many different ways that you have to do this. Uh, how many different ways are there to do this if the prizes differ for each ticket that is drawn? So now the prizes differ. So that means it matters if you're the first ticket drawer or you're the second ticket uh, or the third ticket or the fourth because the prizes differ. So because uh, the order matters here, we're going to use a permutation. So instead of using a combination here, we're going to be using a permutation, 50 objects taken five at a time. And that will change our, our answer. So equals permute 50 choose five. And there's our answer. Gonna copy paste that here, just for the reference. All right. So for number four, there are four celebrities being chosen from a group of ten for a particular drama program. Each celebrity chosen will have a different time slot. How many different programs are are possible here? So in this case, we're just looking at the um, different programs. So we're looking at you know some sort of arrangements right now since they all have a different time slot this means that the you know the order in which the celebrity ch uh, are chosen matters because if you're the first celebrity to be chosen you're gonna have a probably like a morning slot versus an afternoon slot versus an evening slot etc right versus a late night slot so um, there's gonna be different time slots chosen here so therefore order matters in this case so if uh, order matters, we're looking at a permutation here. So in this case, we have a group of 10, and we're choosing 4. Again, you can also view this problem as follows. You can view it as using the multiplication counting principle, or the fundamental counting principle, basically saying that, well, I have 10 choices of celebrities here, and then once I choose that celebrity, then I have 9 choices of celebrity. Once I choose that, I got 8, and then lastly, for the last time slot, I got 7. So these are identical uh, problems, and then I can multiply those together. So 10 with permutation you know, 4 is going to be the same thing as this, 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. 
So um, in this case, we're going to be looking at 10. So we're going to be looking at permutation 10 comma 4. And as I mentioned earlier, that's the same thing as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Oops, that's the wrong number there. Let me change that. Which is 5040. So you get the same identical result. So we have 5040 different programs. Now, from the group of 10 celebrities, suppose 6 are female and 4 are male. What is the probability that all males are selected? So we want, now we are looking at a probability. So remember that the probability means that we have to put the total on the denominator and then what we're looking for in the numerator. So in this case, we're looking for the probability that all are male. Um, in this case, uh, this, this should say all males are selected. Uh, let's see here. We need to identify how many from the group of 10 celebrities. Well, we know that there's four celebrities being chosen, actually. So it says, so um, using the fact that there are four celebrities being chosen, I'll go ahead and um, emphasize that here. What is the possibility, probability that all males are selected? So in this case, this is the same thing as the probability of four males, right? In this case. All right. So if we're doing all the males, well... What's the total number of ways that you can choose uh, four people from this group of 10? Well, in this case, if order matters, then our denominator is going to be the permutation of, well, we got 10 celebrities, and we're choosing four of them. So this is the total number of ways of choosing any celebrity, four of them, from a group of 10, assuming that the order matters because of the time slots. Now, we're only considering the four males, so in this case we have the probability, uh, the permutation, I'm sorry. And in this case, since order matters, we're looking at, well, how many males do we have? We have four males, and we're choosing four males. So that's our permutation. Now, we also have, you know, since we're choosing all four males, that means we're choosing no females. So technically speaking, we can say that there's a permutation in which there are six females, but none are chosen. Uh, because none are chosen, this permutation doesn't really matter. This permutation is going to be equal to one. So that's not going to do anything to the problem. Okay, so that's just you know an extra that we don't really need. All right, so we only really need the four p four and then the ten p four. So in this case, we're going to calculate uh, this. Uh, divided by that. So if we want to calculate that, so we got four. I'm just going to write it out just so that I won't forget. Divided by 10p4. So if we want to type that in, what we're going to do equals permutation, permute, 4 comma 4, divided by permute 10 comma 4. And that gives us our probability, 0 0.0048. We'll round it. So it's a very small chance for that to happen. So we would be kind of surprised if all four males were chosen for this program. Uh, eyebrows might be raised because, you know, there's 10 people and four are male, and yet all four males are being chosen. Very small chance of that happening. All right, so last problem. A committee of five people is to be chosen from 12 available people. There are eight students and four teachers. Find the probability that a committee includes students only or two teachers. So if we want uh, students only from this committee, so we want the probability that basically if we're choosing five people, that's essentially saying that we're choosing five students, right? since all of them are students, and we're only choosing five people, uh, then this makes sense. So for our denominator, denominator has to be the total, right? So 
what are the total number of ways to choose five people from 12? Well, here order does not matter because you can choose any five people. There are no time slots. There are no positions to be filled. It's just five people. So in this case, we have a combination. We have 12 available people and we're choosing five. So that's the total number of ways of choosing five people. Now we want them to be five students, of course. So we're gonna include a combination. Uh, we have eight students and we choose five. Again, order does not matter here. Now, we could also, we could also include a combination for four teachers and we choose zero teachers, but that doesn't really matter too much, right? We know that we're not choosing any of the teachers. So this, pro this combination is really just gonna be equal to one, so it's not gonna impact the problem at all. However, if you have a combination of students and teachers, then you would have to include this combination. All right, so now we're gonna calculate um, eight C five, and eight choose five divided by 12 choose five. So in this case, we're doing eight choose five. So we're gonna come combin eight comma five divided by combin uh, 12 choose five. I believe it was 12 choose five. In that case, we have 0 0.07 one if we just round it it's approximately now if we want two teachers then we need the probability of two teachers and if there's two teachers that means we're really selecting three students right so the we're looking for the probability of two teachers and three students so we have here a combination so again what are the, we need the 12C5 is going to be on the bottom because we're choosing five people in total. So how many different ways in total of choosing five people from 12? Now, specifically in the numerator, we are looking for two teachers and three students. So let's do the teachers first. There are four teachers and we are choosing two of them. And the order does not matter. So that's four choose two and it's a combination. Now we have a total of how many students we have eight students and we are choosing three now the multiplication uh, counting principle states that if we have multiple uh, ways of doing stuff we can multiply those two ways together so we're really just timesing these two combinations together and then dividing it by the bottom combination all right so this is our probability so we're going to go ahead and do this we got four choose two eight choose three and 12 choose 5. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So we have equals. We're going to do parentheses for our numerator. Now we have 4 choose 2. So we got combin 4 choose 2 times combin 8 choose 3. Close the parentheses for the numerator divided by parentheses for the denominator, combin. And then we were doing we had 12 and we were choosing five for our committee. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, divide those together. We get 0.424 in three decimal places. So 0.424. All right, so hopefully this served as a good review of permutations and combinations based off of the uh, lessons we did in class, as well as a nice introduction to Excel using permutations and combinations. I'll see you guys in the next video.